Hey guys, it's Brandon, aka Be Rich Beauty, aka your beauty best friend. Happy Monday, y'all! Faith Evans is trending after her DMX funeral performance. Caitlyn Jenner may not get her Kardashian support after all. And Lindsay Lohan's father was arrested. Chow, you know what to do. Grab your tea, grab your beverage. Let go. Happy Monday. Happy start of the week, sugar. How you doing out there? I hope you had a good weekend. I got a little bit of a tan. I went to the beach yesterday and with some friends. It was a nice, slow weekend for me. And I hope you had a great weekend yourself. What did you do for the weekend? Let me know. Drop it in the comments. I do want to know. I do. I do. All right. Let's jump in. And you know... I feel like nowadays, these parties are getting out of control. You got gender reveals, you got baby showers, you got sip and sees. People do bridal parties, bridal this. Like, it's just turned into a whole event. Well, there's a New Hampshire couple that has made the news because their gender reveal got a little explosive. This New Hampshire family bought 80 pounds of explosives for their baby gender reveal. I'm so sorry. You know I have questions. Was the Publix out of cakes? Was the Party City out of balloons? Like, I want to know what came through your mind as you were sitting down to plan this gender reveal party to say, you know, we want to do something different. Let's not do a cake. Let's not do balloons. Let's not do a little baseball action when we just, you know, somebody throw the, the ball that has the, the gender color inside and we crack it open. Let's buy explosives. In fact, let's buy enough explosives to blow up a whole town. And then somebody had to co-sign and be like, oh, babe, I think that's a great idea. Or if somebody, or if a family member planned it for them, somebody was like, oh, y'all think such and such is going to enjoy this explosives? All right, we're going to buy 80 pounds of explosives. And where does one buy 80 pounds of explosives in non-4th of July season? That's the other question. But I digress. So they bought these explosive child, went to an empty field, because that's when they, they felt like it was going to be the safest to blow things up. And they set off this gender reveal. Not only, and by the way, they set this off. This sent ripples, shock waves through neighboring towns and cities in New Hampshire. And these people thought in the neighboring neighborhoods and towns that they were having an earthquake. Can you imagine having to be next door to some 80-pound explosive moment that's happening? This is not Mission Impossible 3. We're not blowing up buildings around here. We're just trying to find out the gender. And instead, y'all want to make this a whole shebang. Boom. Now, they got ticketed for this because obviously it's not cool to make people have to wear hearing aids because you set off 80 pounds of explosives. So... They got ticketed, but apparently people in the neighborhood, honey, was upset, and rightfully so. So, my thing is, y'all, calm down with these gender reveals. Send a text message next time. Hell, you can even send a carrier pigeon if you want to try something new. Use a pigeon like they used to use back in the day, and let's see if the message gets delivered the same way. Ooh, I don't even want to think about what's next. I don't need anybody to try to outdo them with this 80-pound explosive game. Okay, let's move on. Lindsay Lohan's father, Michael Lohan, has been charged and arrested for bringing addicts to rehab in exchange for payment. So, right. So literally, word on the street is, and when I say word on the street, word on the street is, he's rounding up addicts, bringing them on down to a rehab facility, and he's getting kickbacks off of it. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Initially, when I read it, I was like, oh, Michael, you in trouble? Well, he is, um, because what they're calling it is patient brokering. And I'm like, is this like drug trafficking, but like with people? I don't know. But they're calling it patient brokering. And here's my thing. When I step back to really kind of think about it, him bringing addicts to rehab and him getting a fee off of it, it's almost like a job referral. I refer a friend to for a job. They get hired. I get I get a little extra bonus in my paycheck 
or like a referral program for your neighborhood, your apartment complex. You recommend somebody, you refer them, they move in, you get a little something taken off your rent. I don't know how I feel about this. I wanted to be mad, but should I be mad, y'all? Here's what I also think that's going on. So enforcements are saying that patient brokering corrupts the healthcare system because it's moving from a place of greed and not necessarily from wanting to help people. You don't say. I'm sure patient brokering impacts the healthcare system, but I can tell I have a laundry list of other things in the healthcare system that corrupts the healthcare system and not necessarily patient brokering being on the top of the list. However, they have arrested him and a hundred others in this scheme of, you know, recommendations for a kickback. So we'll see what ends up happening to Lindsay Lohan's father. But you know, Lindsay Lohan's father is one of those people in my book that just can't get right. There's always something going on with this man. And I know Lindsay Lohan probably wakes up every morning and is like, Lord, what did he do now? So we'll keep following this story. I'll be interested to see how this turns out, especially with the justice system against a non-person of color. So we'll see. Lord, they finally laid DMX to rest, y'all. Did y'all watch the funeral? They streamed it live on YouTube yesterday. Um, baby, this man died April 9th and they're just now laying him to rest. But you got to say something. This man went out in style. There was a very big, tall, y'all know I don't speak cars. Big old tall truck with big old wheels and his red casket on the back flat bed being driven in like the rough rider he was. Now they had the funeral at the Barclays Center and apparently it was supposed to be intimate and private because of COVID restrictions. And so obviously the family was there, select um, select celebrities, Eve, Swiss Beats, things like that, Alicia Keys, um, the Rough Riders. And they also had people perform via telecast. And that's what we're about to talk about. Well, Faith Evans is trending sugar because she sang via telecast for DMX. Now... Did y'all watch it? Did y'all see it? You know, I think I'm gonna do y'all one solid. I'm gonna put the link for the for her YouTube performance in the description box and y'all can click on it and watch it. But baby, Faith Evans, I got a couple of things to say. First up, Faith Evans is one of them singers that needs to stand up. She's not a seated singer. She does not have enough diaphragm support. And, and I'm gonna just go ahead and say this. Allegedly, allegedly faith looked like she was a little out of it she might have been on something i don't know i'm not saying she was high but i'm just saying it looked like she could have been high allegedly before she stepped on well she didn't even step on nobody's stage before she just came up on the tv screen singing her two songs and had the nerve to sing the clark sisters not because she can't sing the clark sisters but baby, she had the nerve to sing You Brought the Sunshine and Going Up Yonder. Hey, it's me. Sorry for the interruption. But I wanted to correct myself because I realized the Clark sister sings You Brought the Sunshine and Tremaine Hawkins really made the song Going Up Yonder notable. So the Clark sisters should not be upset over Going Up Yonder because that's not their song. But Tremaine Hawkins should be upset because, again, they didn't know the words. All right, let's jump back in. And one, You Brought the Sunshine was not in your key. Like... Ma'am, what, what is going on here? Did y'all practice? Because I, I guarantee you, this man died on April 9th. You knew before yesterday that you was going to be singing. You had enough time to do somebody's rehearsal. That means you had enough time to adjust the key if you needed to. That means you had enough time to, you know, figure out how best you was going to sound, maybe not seated. And you had enough time for you and your background singers to learn the words. How do you mess up going up yonder? For those that may not know this good old classic song, the lyric is literally, I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord, right? I'm going up yonder, I'm going up yonder, going up yonder. So apparently, I guess the spirit must have moved within faith that she decided to pass the mic to her background singer. Well, first background singer, Sis was like, I'm going up to yonder. First of all, there's no two in that, ma'am. You're just going up yonder. You're not going up to yonder, just going up yonder. So she mumbled her way through that. Then faked a little body roll. Girl, this is not a blue light in the basement special. This is not a bar clay uncut. You are singing at this whole man's funeral and you're doing a body roll and wiggle. And Faith, 
You was only on for about eight minutes, sugar. Where are your shoes? Why are you in your best Fruit of the Loom Hanes white socks? Why, Faith, why? And then she had the nerve to pass the mic to her, her guitar player and background singer behind her. And that fool had the nerve to say, what's the words? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. What you're not going to do is say that out loud. And then had the nerve to mess it up too. I'm going over yonder. No, no, you're not going over yonder. You're going up yonder. I don't get it. Where is, I blame Stevie in this. Where is Stevie? Find me Stevie. Faith, does Stevie not practice with you? Did you not have a proper rehearsal with your piano player? I've come to the conclusion that Faith now needs to officially be taken out of the rotation of tributes of any kind. Because if y'all recall correctly, Faith tried to give Anita Baker a tribute and Anita Baker looked confused. And we, our earlobes were offended the same way she offended our ears with this funeral performance service dedication tribute to good old DMX. And, and I, if that was the clock sisters, I would feel some kind of way too. So Faith now needs to sit out on all these rotations until she can get it together. That's all I got to say. Moving on. We talked about Real Housewives newbie Fallon and her husband Simon getting a divorce. Well, Simon went to the gram, honey, and was doing some question and answers. And he kind of alluded that he was getting a divorce because somebody in the relationship was unfaithful. He basically said that when you're vibrating here and another person vibrating here and they're doing this and doing that, it does not spell for a good marriage. Now, y'all know I had asked alleged questions if Fallon had somebody on the side and it looks like she may have had somebody on the side playing around with enough to cause them to get a divorce. Simon also went on to say, though, that, you know, they've been married for two years, but for over a year now, they've been in a separation type of mentality in space. So you're telling me two years of married life and only one year was a success? And, you know, they had been together for five years before they got married, but child, the I do's turn into a I don't. And apparently... Fallon got somebody on the side, allegedly. Now, you know I would have given you my, my reunion recap, but I'm holding it because I'm doing a special episode tomorrow live with my YouTube friend and pal, DJ Richie Sky. We're going to talk about the reunion looks and all, all the dish and gossip from the reunion. So join me tomorrow for that one. And before I get out of here, you know, I mentioned on Friday that Caitlyn Jenner announced and she filled out the paperwork to run for governor of the state of California. Well, the Kardashian says we are not on board. They have officially announced that they are not using any of their official platforms to endorse Caitlyn. Shade. But apparently they're not doing it because they don't agree with her political views. You know, Caitlyn is very conservative and the Kardashians are not, right? And so they're saying that they're not, even though they're not going to endorse Caitlyn, they also aren't going to endorse any political candidate that's running for governor for California. In addition to that, not only do they have different political views, apparently there's still tension between Caitlyn and Chris. Child, y'all still fighting over who wore it best or the latest designer handbag? I want to know. And before I get out of here, spoiler alert, if you have not watched the grand finale of RuPaul Drag Race, go ahead and fast forward. But congratulations to Simone, honey. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you and in a good way. Simone won season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race and so well deserved. Now, here's my thing. You know, I, I am a proud Simone fan. She showed up for the culture, which each and every outfit that she represented, she had a message. She lip sync for her life. And she's just, she needed it. We needed it. And I think it's it, with everything that's happening, this was a great moment to honor our black beauty queens, our drag queens, and someone that has a message and a great platform. So I can't wait to see what Simone's going to do with this, this upcoming year of her reign. But I wanted to say congratulations, Simone, honey. And on that note, guys, I got to go. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Like this video if you like and leave me a comment. Most importantly, check the notifications and make sure they're turned on. Who loves you? <laughs> I do. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.